Hello and welcome to St John the Baptist Church West Byfleet for our service of Holy Communion. My name is Clive and I am the Honorary Assistant Priest here. And I am joined by Guy, one of our readers, who will be preaching and leading our intercessions. Jeff, one of our church wardens, will be reading the Gospel. If you wish to follow the service, you can download a service sheet from our website. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and therefore Passion Tide begins, the Passion Tide of our Lord. Let us pause for a moment before we commence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening hymn, which is sung by our virtual choir, and it would be lovely if you felt able to join in while you're at home, is It is a Thing Most Wonderful. transgressions, impenitence, and faith. We confess together. Almighty God, 
our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for today and a colleague for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who in the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now among those who went out to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servants also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now in the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. After a break last week for Refreshment Sunday, we've reached the fifth Sunday of Lent. Passion Tide begins. A time when we focus our attention on matters of life and death. And so we join Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. It's not long since Lazarus stumbled out of the dark tomb into the light of day, and we might perhaps expect the next happening to be the celebration of the Passover. Instead, we have the astonishing picture of some Greeks requesting a meeting with Jesus. And this request leads to Jesus' final discourse to the world. I wonder why they wanted to meet him, except that in a way I don't wonder, because I would like to meet Jesus, and I guess you might too. It's not so surprising, I suppose, 
Jesus has always invited anyone and everyone to come and see. And now hear these Greek are. Come to see the person who claims to have come from the Father in heaven, who turned water into wine, who made a blind man see, and who most recently raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Jesus took this opportunity to remind the disciples and all those listening that the hour has come, and then goes on to speak about the secret to life. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It's the pattern of loss and renewal that runs throughout our lives and throughout the world. Even if you've never thought of this as the secret to life, you've lived and experienced it, sometimes by choice and sometimes by chance. Either way, it's there. Look at the way that this pattern is present in your life. Have you ever cared for another person, a child or an adult? If so, you could identify the parts of your life that died so that the other person could develop their own potential, live with dignity, compassion and love. What are the costs and losses you paid for an education or a career? You let go of some things so that other things could come to the fore. For every choice we make, every yes we say, there will be at least one no, and probably many. We see the same pattern in nature, especially at this time of year. From the depths and darkness of winter, the flowers are coming into bloom. The days are getting longer. As I write this, I realise that the simplest way of describing these happenings, these losses and gains, is change. Now I've been heard to say that I don't do change. Well, not if I can help it. Yet, as I read what I've just written, it is obvious to me that I do change as much as the next person. I just hadn't put it into that context. And putting it into the context of Jesus and the cross is rather overwhelming and makes my statement rather shallow. Let's think for a moment about the stories of loss and renewal in the scriptures. The innocence of Adam and Eve is lost so that consciousness might be born. Abraham left his home so that as Abraham he would be a blessing to all the families of the earth. James and John left their home and livelihood to become disciples of Jesus. Jesus taught and here continues to remind his disciples that the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. And so we see the secret to life, a pattern of loss and renewal, dying and rising, letting go and getting back, leaving and returning. It's at the heart of baptism, and it's what we declare every week in the Eucharist. Christ has risen. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So what in my life, what in your life, needs to fall to the earth and die in order for us to bear much fruit? What do we need to let go of today? What might we leave behind? What needs to die so that something new can arise? These are questions which Keith will be asking of us all as we go forward with a vision for the future here in West Byfleet. With Holy Week fast approaching, we remind ourselves that without Good Friday, there could be no Easter day. 
Stay and watch with me your words, Lord, to the disciples before your suffering and death. I know, Lord, you will stay and watch over me all the days of my life. Amen. Of God 
and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. With confidence and trust, let us play, pray to the Father. For the one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church, we pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy. In the week when we remember the life of St. Patrick, we pray for the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the Gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. May peace envelop us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we mark a year since the first COVID lockdown, we pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick and all who suffer. We pray for refugees, prisoners and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we have injured or offended, and we ask for forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for grace to change our lives and to promote the reign of God. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, and we pray for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord is here, His Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts, we we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give, give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because for our salvation he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory. And where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in my hands. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. who in the same night as he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of St John and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. 
Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Join together. Jesus, I love you beyond all things. How I long to receive you with my brothers and sisters at the table you have prepared. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in bread and wine, in this holy sacrament, I ask you to feed me with the manner of your Holy Spirit and nourish me with your holy presence. I unite myself wholly to you, never permitting to be separated from your love. Amen. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and the source of goodness. Through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, O Jesus I have promised, will be sung to us by Andy, Craig and Harry. Do please join us.
back in church next Sunday for Palm Sunday. Of course, the service will be held under the usual COVID separation rules and so on, but I do hope that you'll feel able to join us. If not, we will be recording the, the service and it will be put on our website a little later at the end of the service. And so the blessing. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.